course, spring is a popular time to maybe clean up the house, get rid of some old junk. But what if that junk isn't junk? You know, like cable TV's Antique Roadshow. Our next guest is one of the top antique and collectible appraisers in Connecticut. If anyone knows what it's worth, he does. We welcome antique expert and auctioneer Tom Schwenke. So, Tom, how do you... How Good do you morning, discern Jeff. and divine what's junk and what's uh, trash well, or treasure? Well, that's a great question, you know, and, and uh, it's really my staff of people that work with me at my business in Woodbury Auction that know what everything is worth. Okay. You know, it's, uh, um, but... Uh, uh, is it an acquired skill? Or? Well, you know, it is. I mean, a lot of people think, that, you know, they're self-educated. The, the way you find out what it's worth is, is you spend years you know, learning what things are, how to tell what authenticity means, you mm -hmm. know, age, condition, rarity, you do research. So it's not as simple as sometimes, uh, you know, people say. You know, Is, are so. there any categories of, of, uh, of antiques and collectibles that typically are more likely to be uh, treasure? Well, uh, certainly uh, it's uh, subject to market conditions at any point in time. Okay. Right? So that's one of the things that's interesting about the field. But, Makes sense. but the silver, jewelry, art, you know, all categories, every category has its, its uh, highly valuable items, you know, I mean. So it could uh, be anything. It, it can be anything. I noticed know, that you have uh, Exhibit A. For well, I brought right this right because here. technically this, this is a 19th century puzzle jug. So if you're asking us, well, what's something worth, what could be better than a puzzle jug? A right? puzzle jug? A puzzle jug. What, puzzle jug. dear sir, is a puzzle a jug? A puzzle jug is a, is a ceramic jug. Uh, that was, they were made in the 18th century and the 19th century, both in England and on the continent. And, you know, this is the kind of a thing that somebody could find in, you know, in, wrapped up in 1927 newspapers in their attic, and it's a puzzle jug, but how do they know what it is? It doesn't look like it would hold water, you know? No, it's not, yeah, not, as a base, but, uh, certainly not there uh, anyway. I mean, this, this happens to be, you know, we are, we're having an auction today at 11 o'clock, so I go from here to, to, to that auction, and this is going to be lot 76. In that auction, we've estimated it as as our experts. You yeah. know, we say that it's going to bring somewhere between three and four hundred dollars. It's paired with another item, but there are rarer ones than these, and those bring two to three thousand. You know, so it really but does. Rarer depend. puzzle jugs. That's right, rarer puzzle jugs. Every every category has its gradations of value and and desirability, based on condition, sometimes provenance, who owned it, you know, oh, yeah. who made it, if we can tell who made it. And again, it's just like the stock market, you know. I mean, IBM on one day, one year, maybe 132. Sometimes it might be 109. It doesn't, you know, it fluctuates. Hmm. And there are, there are fluctuations in this market as well. I'm of a certain vintage myself, and this is the first time I've ever even heard of a puzzle jug. <laughs> puzzle jug. All right, what else did you bring well, here? Well, actually, for what I did bring here is something that, to illustrate a point, this is a fabulous piece of Georgian silver. This is lot 94 in our sale now. Uh, this was made in London in 1839. We know that because it has marks, okay, on the bottom okay. that are the marks of the maker. Okay? I see. And London silver was subject to, to strict regulation uh, at that time, and so they had to verify the, the silver content as sterling with a mark. Then there was a city mark. Then there was the maker's mark. Now, the real question is how do we know that that mark is right? Ah. Oh, okay. So, yeah, that's so good. you know, and the market will decide. Now, this this is should bring three to four thousand dollars, you really? know, in the sale today. But but the thing about this object is, uh, I mean, this is the story of my life. You know, I have more people that call me and say, well, you know, I'd like you to come look. We have a great collection of silver. They've taken it out of the attic. They have it out on the dining table. It's all tarnished. They've started polishing it. Okay. Yeah. And I look at it and I say, well, I'm sorry, but, you know, there's very little real silver here. This is silver plate. Ah, uh, okay, so it's just the facade. It's, it's, it. it's, it's, it's a process that was, you know, where it's plated and it's not valuable. You gotcha. know? So, so you really need someone who knows what they're looking at to tell you. And so my tips are find an expert. Okay. I was going to ask you how to do that because a lot of people, I think, you either during or before the, find or an after expert the show's over, they want to know. Because you can't do, you know, you can... You can do a lot of it yourself, but you still don't know whether the object is what you think it is. Yeah. So you find an expert, listen to what that expert tells you, mm -hmm. and don't be greedy. Okay. Don't be greedy. All right. Don't, yeah, don't get your head in the clouds that, just that, yet. You, now, we have just a little bit of a few moments left, but uh, tell us about the guy in the hat here. Okay. This little guy here, one of the, uh, one of the highlights of our auction today. Can Thank you, this? Jeff. You should, right. certainly. Okay. 
uh, is uh, we're featuring a single owner collection of, of wonderful American 19th and 20th century folk art. Uh, it's called the Aronson Collection. They've been collectors for years. So in any case, this little guy here is what's called a whirligig, okay? And they were made in the 19th century. They were yeah. made all the way into the 20th century. And somewhere out there today, somebody's making one in the garage right now. Mm -hmm. But the idea is you put this out in the wind and, and it, it blows. blows around you know? because so, yeah, the arms are You know, this is right kind of, uh, you know, some t it's, it's not fine art. Yeah. You know, it's it looks kitchen. like anybody could do it. Exactly. Yeah. But, you we know, have to get going, but, but, but just any fin finishing comments about this? Well, so this, uh, this was made in the, in the early 20th century. Yeah. You know, and uh, he's, he's a guy with a top hat. You know, two to three hundred dollars. You not can bad. own a piece of history. Especially if it's not your taste and you already have it, you can always put it on auction. I mean, you know, you put that right out there and feature it, uh, you know, on a pedestal in your dining room. All right. Well, auctioneer and, uh, <laughs> and appraiser. Tom Schwenke, thank you very much for coming in. Jeff, my Good pleasure. Luck at thank today. you very much. And you're out of Woodbury? Woodbury, Connecticut. Okay. Yeah. Good to know. 11 today. All right. Okay. Great Thanks. to know. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you Something very else much. to do if you haven't uh, made any other plans today.